Welcome to the GCSE options presentation. I'm just going to do this online, I'm going to do it as quickly as I can so then we uh, can just have an idea of what's going on in the options process. So this is the presentation I'd have given on the options evening night. Just a few words about what the curriculum is. Um, you can read that. There's going to be a PDF version sent home so you can read it in, at your own leisure, all of the slides in today's presentation. I've just got a few questions that people have asked um, over the years about options. Um, do you need a language to go to university? Well, there's the answer there. We're going to really encourage all of SEP1 students in A1 and B1 to do languages, and it's open to anybody who wants to do French um, as well. But um, ultimately, if the children or yourself don't want them to do French, then we will allow you to choose a different option in that block. So uh, what happens if my child doesn't get their options A? have chosen, well 80% of children do, so um, most of you will not need to worry, um, but we will try and fit, best fit, what options each student does. And I'll have individual meetings with any student um, before year 10, before the end of year nine, to um, work out what they will actually do. So why is triple science an option? Well, we really just want to give uh, triple scientists as a big subject, and want to give them as much time as possible to actually complete the GCSEs of biology, chemistry and physics. So lots of schools um, do after school extra lessons. We don't do that. We just make sure you have um, 14 hours of lessons a fortnight, seven hours a week by choosing it as an option. Uh, the options process is happening now because we need to get it started and get the timetable uh, worked out. Um, we'll hopefully have a, a working timetable sometime in June for next year in September. We need to start that process now. And um, the key part of getting a good timetable is that all the options have been done in year 10 and 11. So my child wants to choose two subjects in the same block. Can the option blocks be changed? Um, so the option blocks that are in the uh, options booklet will remain as they are. You can only have one option in each of those blocks because those lessons will be taught at the same time. So um, some examples uh, might include triple science and um, dance. So you would not be able to choose GCSE triple science and the RSL in dance because they're both in option block four. So you just have to make a choice and that's what options is all about. Um, so Computer science is a subject that we'll talk about a little bit later in that um, it may not go ahead. Um, hopefully it will do. If enough children choose to do computer science, then it will go ahead. Okay, uh, we don't offer food and nutrition or catering. We don't have the expertise or the staff in the school to deliver that really well. So we really only have specialist teachers in front of our children uh, and uh, we don't have a food and nutrition teacher in the school. It's not like it used to be anyway. Um, it's not as as fun as the children would imagine it to be. Our key stage three food and nutrition lessons are all about cooking and that life skill. Um, the course that um, runs as a GCSE is not like that at all. Um, your child will complete um, nine qualifications in total. Um, there will be a, a few students which have been organised through uh, the Senko perhaps who will have a different number of qualifications that they complete, but they will have nine level two qualifications by the time they finish school here. So uh, will we stop an option if a member of staff leaves? That's always a question. It has happened in the past, um, but we do not stop um, subjects if a member of staff leaves. We make sure that we have the capacity to replace that member of staff if we need to. And that's part of our process that we're doing now to making sure that we've got the right staffing levels for next year's options process. Um, how's the academy up? Adapting to the government changes in key stage four qualifications. Well, all of the new GCSEs are now um, in the process of going ahead. So this is the second year of all of the new GCSEs. Um, we have some level two qualifications that are coming online this year as well. Um, and we'll, if you look through the options booklet, you'll see the other level two qualifications that aren't GCSEs and there's a bit more detail about them. Okay, um, I'm going to really race through each of the subject slides. Um, you can spend some more time um, reading through your PDF version. So you can open that up on your iPad or your computer or tablet, or you can indeed print it off at home and spend some more time going through it. So art, craft and design. So the art and craft design GCSEs, 
Um, the textiles and the GCSE art are very uh, similar, so they're subjects you cannot choose together. You cannot choose both textiles and art because they actually carry what we call the same qualification code. So they're considered both as art GCSEs, so you can choose one or the other. Our art and textiles department always get fantastic, amazing results, and there's some, some work that is our current year 11 work at the moment on the presentation there. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll let you read those slides in at your leisure, um, but you are expected to do textiles and artwork at home at least two hours of independent learning per week if you want to be successful in those subjects. And like I say, absolutely fantastic results out of that department. Another subject that's being run by the art and design department is going to be GCSE photography. It's a subject that's coming back this year. We've had it. Uh, we've had a uh, a few years ago, we used to do GCSE photography. Um, I am guessing that this is going to be a really popular choice of people, but we will only be running one class of this subject. So if there's too many students who opt to do photography, um, they, they'll be asked to justify and come up with reasons why they really should be doing GCSE photography. And um, we'll interview those students later as to which ones um, will choose it. Hopefully we get a nice class of 25 and only 25 opt for it in that scenario, that's what the class will be. If we have more children who opt to do it, then we don't have the capacity to actually have more than that number. So um, if your student, if your child is really interested in doing it, then it's really important that you have good reasons um, of why you want to do it. And there is a lot of work to do in photography. It's not going to be a subject where you get your phone out and you'll be taking photos. It's not that at all. Uh, please read through the options booklet. It tells you a bit more about that. Um, drawing skills is really important as well, having really good drawing skills. So um, that will definitely be part of it. And we'll talk to your art teachers as to whether that's a suitable qualification for you. Okay, I'll let you read that at your leisure. So GCSE history, um, I, I won't talk too much about it. You have to choose either GCSE history or geography. There is the option if you wanted to, to choose both because you can choose um, geography stroke history in the second option block. Um, let you read through that. Um, really great subject, humanity subject, great strong department that we have there. So GCSE French, like I said earlier, I would encourage all of A1 and B1 students to do French, and I'd love to see lots of A2 and B2 also doing French, but indeed it's actually open to anybody in any of the classes. Um, we will strongly advise A1 and B1 to do so. Um, the, the, the government and um, the Department for Education will have you believe that it will help you get into university. Um, I don't know whether that's how true that is in five years' time, whether someone would be um, uh, less likely to get a place at university because they haven't done French. I would suggest that is probably not the scenario or the case, but it is a really good GCSE. And it does. There's no doubt it does look good on a CV to have a GCSE in a modern foreign language such as French. OK, talk to the French teachers and they will recommend doing it to you in those subjects. OK, I'll let you read through this stuff on the French slides at your leisure. Um, media studies. So we've got media studies here. GCSE media studies uh, is a subject we've been very, very successful at, at over the last few years. Um, uh, Mr. Thring leads on that subject, so I'm sure many students, he's already told me that many students have been talking to him about what media studies is about. Uh, please read through the guide. It really is um, a bit of everything. We've got the list here, magazines, films, TV, video games, uh, really about the culture of the media and all of the things that we get thrown at us every day and understanding all of those um, so it is exam based. There is a, a piece of coursework that's worth 30%, but there are two exams. So most of the GCSEs now have written exam papers, um, the exception being, of course, art and textiles. And OK, so we've got GCSE PE. Uh, I know that the PE department, the PE teachers have been talking a lot to the students about which um, level two qualification, whether GCSE PE or the VCERT in Health and Fitness is the most appropriate course for the student to take, your child to take. I would recommend that you actually do only choose the GCSE option that the PE teachers have recommended.
So there's VCERT Health and Fitness. Uh, as you can see, it's got a 40% externally assessed exam. So there were always exams um, in all of the level two qualifications. Well, most of the level two qualifications and VCERT PE is also one of those. And 60% is an externally quality assured piece of work that's done internally. Okay, so I'll let you read through all of that. We've got child development. We've started doing that in year 10. Our current year 10 do that this year. It's the first time we've done it for a few years. Led by Mrs. K. Uh, absolutely fantastic course. The children in year 10 are really enjoying it. Uh, anybody who's interested in, in jobs in the uh, nursery industry or working with young children should definitely consider child development. Uh, I'll let you again read through all of that through the booklet. Vocational studies, a lot of people have asked me about this. This subject, we will choose specific students that vocational studies will be suitable for. So if you haven't been approached, um, then it's not the qualification for you. It is a level one qualification, not a level two qualification. Um, uh, absolutely fantastic course, again led by Mrs K, but we will approach you if we think this is the qualification that is uh, suitable for your child. Okay, GCSE drama, loads of work that is done together in groups as part of a group. So you can see students must present at least one performance as part of a group. Therefore, they have to be able to work in a group because it will affect other people's grades if they do not work well together. Um, absolutely fantastic results, as I said. Um, and the non-exam assessment is 60% of the qualification with the exam assessment as 40% of the qualification. I'll let you read through that at your leisure again. We've got business and enterprise. It's a visa NCFE level two technical award. Uh, so that means there is more uh, coursework based. Um, it's led by Mr. Collier. So you got a 60% um, synoptic project, but of course there still is a 40% exam um, requirement in this subject. So a 21 hour controlled assessment is a synoptic project people can get. If you're if someone who can meet deadlines and get work done throughout the whole of year 10 and throughout the whole of year 11, business as enterprise is something that you should consider. Okay, GCSE design technology, a subject we've been doing for years. It is all, um, uh, so 50% so is a portfolio and 50% is uh, an exam. So we have Triple science, I've already talked a little bit about that. You really do need to be in the top set only. So in A1 and B1 and have that conversation with your teacher if you're looking to do triple science. Uh, almost a requirement to um, go into professions such as veterinary care or, or medicine um, to do the triple science. Lastly, I just want to say that we were going to uh, give the students an option form tomorrow and they're going to fill that form out. It's a provisional form only. It's nothing to worry about if you wish to change your options later on. We just need to get the process started for completing the options process. That's why I'm giving them a draft form to complete tomorrow, a provisional form. They'll complete it in class and then I can start working on uh, the options and the timetable for next year. You're going to list your preferences one to seven in each of the columns and we will try very much so to ensure that children get their first choices and like I say 80% of the time students get their first choices. Thank you for listening. If you've got any uh, deeper questions then please do feel free to email me. Thank you very much.